Welcome to Kansas Ag Report. I'm Ken Rogers. On this week's program, Erica Popplerider talks with Wade Weber about how Kansas 4-H members have handled the challenges that COVID has brought this summer. She also caught up with Assistant State Climatologist Mary Knapp. You think June had some interesting weather. You were right. What about the days ahead? We also have features from Kansas Corn, Kansas Wheat, and the Kansas Farm Bureau, and our weekly updates from the Kansas Livestock Association and markets from Pinion. Kansas Ag Report brought to you in part by the Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers, Kansas Farm Bureau, a grassroots ag organization representing the state's farm and ranch families since 1919, KFB.org and the Kansas Wheat Commission, lending in the adoption of profitable innovations from wheat online at kswheat.com. In agricultural news from agview.net, the Kansas State Fair is more than just a fair, it's a celebration of Kansas. A family tradition, a fun, exciting experience for people of all ages. For 106 uninterrupted years, the fair has been the state's largest gathering of Kansans, with not even a Spanish flu or world war halting the annual end of summer, right? But this year, a little different. The Kansas State Fair Board recently reconsidered their previous decision and voted to cancel the 2020 fair. Circumstances, including several big vendors pulling out of this year, forced them to reconsider that decision they made earlier. Well, this year's fair was scheduled for September 11th through 20th, and while that won't happen, the fair will have 4-H and FFA youth livestock competitions plus open class livestock exhibitions in September. It'll be held with the same prestige of competition found at the traditional fair. These special contests showcase the superior showmanship and months of hard work and determination of all the exhibitors while still maintaining a safe environment. Well, China made the biggest purchase of U.S. corn in history earlier this month. The Asian nation made the buy in an attempt to meet their commitments in the Phase 1 trade deal with the U.S., even as tensions continue to rise now between D.C. and China. USDA says private exporters report that China bought 1.76 billion tons of corn for shipment during the 2020-21 marketing year. That starts September 1st. The sale passed the previous record of a one-day corn sale to China of 1.45 million tons. That was in December of 1994, if you remember there. The deal followed the sale of 1.365 million tons to China back on July the 10th, now a deal that was spread over a couple of marketing years. China increased its corn and soybean import forecast for the current season as the country expects to step up its agricultural purchases from the United States. China also booked deals to buy 129,000 tons of soybeans in the upcoming marketing year. Beijing also agreed to buy $80 billion worth of U.S. ag products over the next two years in that phase one trade deal between the two countries. More information online anytime at agview.net. When we return, Erica learns more about some innovative 4-H'ers and a review of a windy June in Kansas. Stay with us. Kansas Ag Report brought to you in part by the Kansas Livestock Association. Supporting members' business interests and meeting consumer demands. KLA.org. Oldie Seed Farms, carrying soil specific seed. Find them on the web at oldieseed.com. That's O H L D E seed.com. And Kansas Corn, building the future at kansascorn.com. Next time you see a beautiful field of corn, reach out and thank the farmers who work tirelessly to raise corn for livestock feed, renewable fuels, and exports to feed a growing world population. The farmers on the Kansas Corn Commission work for Kansas Corn with grower-funded checkoff dollars that support foreign and domestic market development, research, promotion, and education to expand opportunities for Kansas farmers. To learn more, visit kscorn.com.
Erica Poppelreiter here. Today we meet with Wade Weber, State 4-H Program Leader. He shares how youth are finding new and unique ways to continue their summer 4-H experiences amidst COVID. This year has certainly been uh, complicated amidst COVID. How is Kansas 4-H handling that? Well, I'm very proud of the fact that uh, it really has been all about communication with our volunteers, our local decision makers on our county boards, as well as our professionals, along with our, um, along with our families in, in, in the Kansas 4-H program. It's all about how do we adapt to change? How do we adapt to disruption? And the opportunity to talk with each other, uh, to communicate with each other as we move into a virtual environment. So we had 4-H club meetings who were all of a sudden were going virtual. Um, we also had activities that all of a sudden were moved to a virtual or at least a non-face-to-face -face experience. And as I've, I've seen volunteers and young people um, be creative, uh, be adaptive, um, I've been really proud um, of people moving through the loss of you know, option A, and, but then being excited about option B. And that's really what we're talking about, helping build that resiliency in the young people, uh, the 4-H spirit, you might say, and help them keep moving forward. Well, and you talk a little bit about youth starting you know, virtual meetings and finding opportunities. Do you have any unique opportunities where somebody has sort of overcome this challenge and created something new? Well, absolutely do in all 105 counties of Kansas. One in particular that I'll share is in Haskell County. Um, in the, about May or so, uh, the opportunity for the in-person spring show was, was, was uh, taken away uh, because of health concerns. And so the opportunity to turn around and say, well, how can we continue to do something, learn something, and lead something? Uh, really became uh, the mantra of this, uh, of the Haskell County 4-H uh, Teen Council. And so they went and talked to their 4-H um, agent and said, we'd like to do this. And the agent said, but I don't know how to do that. And they turned around to the agent and said, but we do and we want to learn how to do it. And so sure enough, those, those students went forward and they learned how to do a virtual online livestock judging contest. And so they went through and they created tutorial videos that they shared with fellow 4-H members across the county, gave them tips on how to record, and then sure enough, uploaded those things, put it together, and, and delivered a contest. A great example of youth innovation and youth leadership, learning by doing, and, giving a, and doing that in the context of supporting adults. To me, again, the 4-H spirit in action. Well, and you know, just to wrap up here, I know that 4-H is continuing to create virtual opportunities. Can we talk a minute about that? Absolutely. Um, as we continue to move forward, as we're in county fair season now, uh, many counties have thought through uh, a virtual option or a, a hybrid option where they're practicing social distancing, uh, masking when appropriate, um, obviously frequent sanitation and those types of things um, so that their county fairs can continue to go forward um, because the county fair feedback and evaluation process is so important to that learning process for young people uh, to get that feedback and to do that in a way that's not only safe but also accomplishes our youth development mission going forward. So those are some examples that we're doing this summer. Um, we're continuing to innovate and create when it comes to virtual opportunities and increasing some of our partnerships in the fall with Kansas State University as well as industry uh, career exploration type of experiences as we go into the fall. Uh, really building on the successes we had this summer uh, in particular with our entomology programs, our, our geology programs where we hosted some things online as well as our Discovery Days virtual options which again to this day are uh, now available on demand um, um, on our YouTube site uh, at Kansas 4-H as well. Well again thank you Wade for joining us. Um, you know, we're really excited to hear that 4-H youth are continuing to trudge forward in this uncertain time. Absolutely. The thing that I want to share is even though our methods are changing, our mission continues to remain the same. The Kansas Ag Report brought to you in part by Kansas Grain Sorghum, growers working together. Learn more at ksgrainsorghum.org. Grass and grain, online or in the mail, keeping Kansas farmers informed for over 60 years. Grassandgrain.com and agview.net.
serving the beef belt and western corn belt with reliable and relevant agriculture information. AgView.net Many seed companies claim to offer the latest genetics, but how many have tested those genetics in soils just like yours? The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Research Program has fully tested the latest seed genetics in soils that are right in your neighborhood. The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Program can recommend the best performing hybrids from technologies like Enlist, Extend, and Liberty Link that will optimize the yield and profit of every acre on your farm. Contact Oldie Seed today. Today, we caught up with Mary Knapp, Assistant State Climatologist at Kansas State University. After a month where many of us felt like we saw little to no rain, she provides the outlook on what farmers can expect here in July. Here, I serve as an outreach person for the State Climate Office, and what we do is make sure that weather information is available to the citizens of Kansas. Behind us, we have the campus weather station. It's a manual station. We come out every day and take the temperature and precipitation. We also have a series of mesonet stations. Those are automated weather stations. You can find that information online at mesonet.ksu.edu. The difference between the two is I only have to come out here once a day. Um, the mesonet stations measure data and it's updated online every five minutes. So if you're interested in just how hot is it right now, um, you can check that out and see. Uh, we have over 60 around the state, so there's one near you and you can find out what, what conditions are like. You can also get the wind, the heat index, uh, animal comfort index. There's a raft of information available. Excellent. So we just went through the month of June where I think a lot of us felt like we never saw a drop of rain. And I know you guys are tracking with the drought index. What are we looking at as we get into July and maybe even August, if you can determine that at this point? Well, right now, June was very dry. It wasn't our driest on record for the state, but it certainly was down in the bottom quarter of events. It was actually about the 17th driest June of record for the state of Kansas. Um, some places saw moisture, <clears throat> mostly in the central and north central parts of the state, but there were a lot of areas that didn't get anything at, or much at all, you know, less than a couple of inches, well below what they would typically see. And that is reflected in the current U.S. drought monitor. The western areas of the state are in extreme to severe drought. Um, as you go along the southern border, it's a little bit more in the extreme to moderate drought. But what's also noteworthy is that we're seeing some moderate drought showing up in southeastern Kansas. And that is kind of a shock. They had the wettest start to the year on record through May. And then basically the faucets got shut off and they were getting well below what they normally would get, less than about 25% of what the normal June rainfall is. And that, of course, is reflected in the, in the worsening drought conditions. So is there any optimism for July? Do, should we expect some moisture? Well, we are forecast to be drier than normal. That does not mean that we don't get anything at all. It means that it isn't what we would typically expect to get in July. And that not necessarily will result in drought everywhere. If you get um, adequate moisture every couple of days, you're you and your crops can do fairly well. It's when you go for days on end without any moisture with some strong winds and some high temperatures, then things really start to go downhill and we start seeing problems. Um, and, and that is uh, actually our outlook for the next week is for much drier than normal conditions. Um, southeast may get a break. They may see as much as an inch and a quarter, which would be slightly below what they would get in a week's time, but um, certainly more than they've seen in June. Uh, the rest of the state will be lucky to see a quarter of an inch. Uh, to put that in perspective, here in Manhattan, we would expect to get about a tenth of an inch a day as we go through um, the end of June. Well, thanks, Mary. We really appreciate that update. And 
certainly we'll all be crossing our fingers for some rain. Thank you. Many seed companies claim to offer the latest genetics, but how many have tested those genetics in soils just like yours? The Oldie Seed Know to Grow research program has fully tested the latest seed genetics in soils that are right in your neighborhood. The Oldie Seed Know to Grow program can recommend the best performing hybrids from technologies like Enlist, Extend, and Liberty Link that will optimize the yield and profit of every acre on your farm. Contact Oldie Seed today. Next time you see a beautiful field of corn, reach out and thank the farmers who work tirelessly to raise corn for livestock feed, renewable fuels, and exports to feed a growing world population. The farmers on the Kansas Corn Commission work for Kansas Corn with grower-funded checkoff dollars that support foreign and domestic market development, research, promotion, and education to expand opportunities for Kansas farmers. To learn more, visit kscorn.com. Kansas Corn is excited for the fifth year. We are currently planning um, to host our listening tours across the state. Um, with everything going on, we're not 100% sure they'll happen, but we're planning to move forward as if they will. We are doing six stops this year, so Northeast, Southeast, North Central, South Central, Northwest, and Southwest. Um, all of the tour dates and stops are on our website at kscorn.com slash tour. And we're asking everyone that's planning to attend to register. That way, if any changes need to happen, um, we will be able to notify those folks that have registered if changes need to happen. Um, if, if for some reason something is not able to happen in person, we will look at a virtual option, um, but we are hoping to move forward right now with um, within person. We're working with each location to make sure there's plenty of spacing. Um, we'll have hand sanitizer and mask. Any precautions um, folks need to take, we'll make those available. Um, these events um, will plan to serve a meal um, at each location. We've worked with great caterers that are sometimes even the bigger draw, but we will also be providing a quick update on what's going on in the world of trade, ethanol, and our education programs and how we've been modifying those lessons to help fit the current education outlook um, for K through 12 education. So we're excited um, to hopefully be able to be out across the state and see folks um, and give those updates. But most importantly, these are also called listening tours. And the reason for that is very intentional because we wanna have two-way conversation. We need feedback on what we're doing, but also what your concerns are, um, where you think we need to be putting the emphasis. And then we take all of that back to our Kansas Corn um, Board from the association and the commission and give that to them at the end of August to make decisions for the next 12 months. So we hope to see folks across the state. Again, go to kscorn.com slash tour for locations and dates and um, what that will look like. And hopefully if you are in the area and comfortable that you'll be able to join us. And we will look for continuous ways to update all of our members um, if you're not able to join us in person. What if U.S. soybean meal were more than a commodity? If seed companies and the soybean checkoff built a better variety. That future is here. The time is now. To meet end user demands, the soybean checkoff is investing in the compositional quality of soybeans, including meal. A message from the Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. The USDA's National Institute for Food and Agriculture has selected Kansas State University to serve as a center for efforts to improve U.S. winter wheat varieties. The university received $1 million to establish the International Wheat Yield Partnerships Winter Wheat Breeding Innovation Hub. K-State will lead the effort to evaluate research findings from several projects that contribute to significantly improved wheat yields. Hub partners will seek ways to stack or combine desirable traits from those projects into elite winter wheat varieties for U.S. growers. Desirable traits may include genetic improvements that make winter wheat more resistant to pests, disease, or drought, thus improving its yield potential. This partnership is established to maximize the value of research investments for the benefit of global agriculture by translating research findings into commercial breeding products. 
it is estimated that the world's wheat production must double by the year 2050 in order to meet the needs of a population expected to surpass 9 billion people. Kansas Wheat CEO Justin Gilpin says, this is an important time for wheat, and the timing of this project coincides perfectly with the investment Kansas farmers are making into wheat at the Kansas Wheat Innovation Center and K-State. The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. Many seed companies claim to offer the latest genetics, but how many have tested those genetics in soils just like yours? The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Research Program has fully tested the latest seed genetics in soils that are right in your neighborhood. The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Program can recommend the best performing hybrids from technologies like Enlist, Extend, and Liberty Link that will optimize the yield and profit of every acre on your farm. Contact Oldie Seed today. My name is Jackie Munt, and I represent the 7th District on the Vote FBF Board. So now more than ever, this is going to be our last election before um, we have the, the census redistricting. Um, there's more people who are in urban areas and less people who are going to be in rural areas and have that firsthand understanding of what it's like to be on a farm and the issues that are there. And so it's really important for us to have people who engage in the process and speak up about what's important um, to one of the most important industries in our state. And so I think that people getting out um, in this election cycle, which again, all of the races almost are on the table. So we've got 125 uh, House races, we've got 40 Senate races, um, we've got our federal races, um, all four of the House districts, as well as the Senate seat up. And so this is a great time to, to speak up and say, agriculture is an important industry in our state, and we want to be able to continue to have family farms and ranches. And so we need people who, even if they don't have a farming background, are willing to be engaged in the process. And that's why our members need to make their voices known, which they historically have been very strong. We want to keep that strength up so that people see us as the voice of agriculture. No one plans to get sick or injured, but when life happens, it's important you and your family are protected. Kansas Farm Bureau Health Plans are there to provide continued health care coverage to meet your needs. Choose from a broad range of individual and family plans. And if you're over 65, we have options for you too. Learn more at kfbhealthplans.com or contact a Farm Bureau Financial Services agent near you. The time of year has arrived when the combination of high temperatures, elevated humidity, low wind speeds, and high solar radiation put livestock at risk for heat stress. To help producers be aware of and understand weather conditions that could adversely affect livestock health, the Industry Resources section of KLA.org has a link to daily heat stress maps from the National Weather Service. The maps estimate general stress level trends for livestock over the forecast period. Veterinarians and animal scientists suggest steps to mitigate livestock heat stress include additional water access, removing winter windbreaks to increase airflow, providing shade, using light colored bedding, and incorporating feeding schedules that avoid the internal heat buildup animals experience with normal digestion. Avoiding intentional movement of animals is recommended as well. Wetting pen surfaces and animals can be effective if done in a manner that doesn't increase humidity. Using large droplets, not a fine mist, to saturate the hair coat is recommended for maximum cooling. Many seed companies claim to offer the latest genetics, but how many have tested those genetics in soils just like yours? The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Research Program has fully tested the latest seed genetics in soils that are right in your neighborhood. 
The Oldie Seed Know to Grow program can recommend the best performing hybrids from technologies like Enlist, Extend, and Liberty Link that will optimize the yield and profit of every acre on your farm. Contact Oldie Seed today. Grain sorghum is one of the most important cereal crops worldwide, and Kansas leads the nation in its production. Over the years, sorghum has been either exported, used in animal feed domestically, or for other industrial uses. Recently, its use in the ethanol market has seen tremendous growth, with 30% of domestic sorghum typically going to ethanol production. Kansas Grain Sorghum is committed to sorghum research, market development, and education. Learn more at ksgrainsorghum.org. Good morning. This is Derek Hermish with Pinion, a division of Keiko Isom. The last three weeks have seen several changes in the corn market, resulting from differing USDA reports, Chinese purchases, and different weather forecasts. Stuff that we have to deal with this time of year and any year, but some more extremes perhaps for this year than what we have had to deal with. Number, the first one being the June acreage report or the USDA lopped off 5 million acres, taking the March intention report of 97 million acres on corn down to 92. That was a big change in and of itself, but still maybe not enough to push us to an ending stock balance sheet that makes it an environment that could be friendly to prices. But that combined with an adverse weather forecast at the time did help propel us 30 to 40 cents off the lows. At which point where we stalled out, waited to see what else would develop, weather changed, came in better, came in wetter, came in a little bit cooler than what perhaps early forecast had been, and we fell off. 30 to 40 cents back down. Maybe not retesting the lows just yet, but a big drop off. The latest friendly item in our lineup of news items to affect the corn market has been Chinese purchases of corn. Buying corn in a record way, in a way that they haven't, in some time or ever on a one-day balance sheet from an earlier corn, purchase, corn purchase earlier this week has now thrown another monkey in the wrench that is the corn market prices this year. You combine that with COVID-19 which we have to deal with with all market prices in every aspect of our lives creating some unpredictability creates a highly unpredictable environment for the corn market this year and there have been opportunities though slim and perhaps quickly fading there have been opportunities to take advantage of and it can be very helpful to have an advisor that helps you manage to do these and perhaps suggest some tools to use that maybe you haven't used before. And if you're looking for something like that, you ought to give us a call. 888-452-8751. Have a good day. Well, that's our show this week. Be sure to be social with us online at kansasagreport.net or on Facebook at Kansas Ag Report Television Show or Twitter. Kansas Ag Report. I'm Ken Rogers. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. The Kansas Ag Report brought to you in part by Kansas Grain Sorghum. Growers working together. Learn more at ksgrainsorghum.org. Grass and grain, online or in the mail. Keeping Kansas farmers informed for over 60 years. Grassandgrain.com.